Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. After Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam won the battle of Al Ahzab, and after silencing many tribes who were swearing at Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam or helping his uh, enemies, like uh, the Sariya of uh, Abu Ubaid ibn al Jarrah, in which they endured so much hunger until one of them had only one uh, date to suck for all day like a baby. They sucked one day each like a baby, but after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, sorted for them out from the sea a rizq a provision which is a hut al-ambar and they even gave prophet muhammad sallam from it this area called sariyat al-khaft because the sahaba ate herbs and plants uh, because of hunger in this uh, sariya the son of uh, sa'ad ibn ubad called qais uh, he slaughtered nine jazair nine uh, camels but after that Abu Ubaida ibn al-Jarrah uh, negated them. So they endured so much to uh, convey this Islam for us. But uh, most of us have done nothing for their Islam unfortunately. There were other sarayas like the Sariya of Abdullah ibn Rawaha to some Jewish who were uh, allying the enemies of Islam. Uh, Abdullah ibn Rawaha killed uh, Yasir ibn Razam al-Yahudi. And the Sariya of Abdullah ibn Atik uh, to kill Abi Rafi' uh, the Jew. There was another glad tiding to uh, the Muslims because Amru ibn al As uh, made da'wah to Al Asbagh ibn Amru al Kalbi uh, and even uh, married his daughter. He was Christian and it was a opening to uh, the Christians of uh, Syria, Lebanon and those regions. All these uh, deceivers and betrayers were silenced and debunked, including the Oraniyin who uh, came to Medina. They complained to Prophet Muhammad Sassim that they were sick, their bellies, etc. He, he told them drink from the abuel and the milk of the camels. They did that. After that, they were apostates and uh, they uh, tortured the Sahaba. Prophet Muhammad Sassim treated them alike. Uh, sorted out their eyes because they did to the Sahaba and cut their uh, hands and legs because they did to the Sahaba too. So it was not tamthil, there is no deformation in Islam except that these guys they did this so Prophet Muhammad did the same treatment as they did. They, they are called the Uraniyin and they were thrown in Al Harrat until they died of hunger. So after the Saray of Abdur Abdurrahman ibn Auf uh, to Dawmat al Jandal and after Prophet Muhammad وسلم, silenced also some uh, barbaric uh, tribes like Banu and uh, Saraya like uh, Saraya al ghaba they just flee to the mountains. Now today we will speak inshallah on the uh, treaty, uh, the truce of al Hudaybiyah, Sulh al Hudaybiyah. what happened in this event inshallah. In 6 Hijri, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa saw a dream that he uh, went to uh, Mecca, especially that Sahaba uh, missed Kaaba so much, they were banished from it, uh, they were kicked out from it and uh, it's not in their own will to go out of Mecca, they love Mecca, so you now it's an opportunity Prophet Muhammad Sassim told them that inshallah uh, we will do Umrah this year, they came with 1400 Sahabas, uh, so they came to Mecca but the Mecca people did not want to them to enter Kaaba because the Arabs will speak and say they obliged Mecca to accept them because now they are more powerful. So they made this uh, treaty, before Sahaba entered Mecca, Quraysh sent Khalid ibn Walid and then sent Al Hulais ibn Alqama, Urwa ibn Mas'ud al Thaqafi, in which uh, they happen. Uh, uh, Urwa wanted to touch some beard of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and Abu Bakr, you know, just removing him from touching it. And he said, that These uh, cowards will just leave you in war when we fight you. Uh, here, Abdullah, uh, Abu Bakr said something uh, severe to Urwa ibn Mas'ud Thaqafi. He, he said, we will never leave him and he uh, insulted and cursed this enemy. So it is uh, allowed in Islam to insult someone or curse someone uh, who is uh, an enemy of Islam if he surpasses the limit. And Prophet Muhammad SAW never responded to Abu Bakr uh, like saying to Abu Bakr, why did you say that? He never said that because it's allowed in Islam at some time, at some point to attack back someone who uh, like uh, attack you. And I said these people you know went a mark against me and so on. It's in Bukhari and it's allowed in Islam to uh, like like we do on um, some pages and, and groups. When we attack back the Christians we do not insult but we just give them what they have in, in their Bible. But some of them who are insulting it's allowed in Islam to do this at some time not, not all the time. Like give them some hard hard time and then leave them. Also Sahaba did something weird, they never did that too. So here we are in front of a scene that is unprecedented and will not be repeated again. 
the Prophet Muhammad said, whenever he spat or something, they would take his saliva and rub it on their... Uh, it's not allowed in Islam, by the way, to go to ascent and, you know, fight over his uh, wudu water or something. Prophet Muhammad Wasallam let the Sahaba do that just to show Urwa ibn Mas'ud Thaqafi that the, these Sahaba that you are despising, they will never leave me. And this is exactly what he said when we, he went to Quraysh. He said, I saw some people, I saw other kings, but... How they respect their Prophet, these Sahabas, I never saw like that. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent Uthman ibn Affan to see whether really Quraysh want to do peace and uh, treaty, truce, uh, and uh, this uh, hudna amongst them. And uh, Uthman uh, lasted for long. They, the Muslims thought that they killed him. Uh, so the Sahaba started to give a pledge to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, pledge allegiance to him that we will fight. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran Surah Al-Fatih, if they fought you, uh, they will all flee and escape. And suddenly Uthman arrives and the uh, Sahaba, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Mushrikeen uh, do the treaty. Before that, some 80 uh, Mushriks come to the Sahaba to break this treaty. But the hero of Islam, Muhammad bin Maslama, uh, he is the, the man of the uh, decisive moments. So he take them and uh, you know, he release them to Quraysh. The Sahaba gave pledge to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. called the uh, pledge of uh, Ar-Radwan, Bay'at Ar-Radwan. They gave pledge to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that they will fight if ever they come. Um, the mushriks come to fight us uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says certainly Allah was pleased with the believers when they uh, pledged allegiance to you O Muhammad he knew what was in their hearts so he sent uh, tranquility uh, upon uh, them now we come to the tips of this uh, treaty uh, truce between uh, the Sahaba between the Muslims and the pagans that for 10 years there will be no fighting and if anyone apostates from the Muslims goes to the Mushriks he will not uh, be allowed to come back and vice versa and this is uh, clear proof in Islam that the uh, not all the apostates are killed and this is what Ibn Qayyim too says in Zad al-Ma'ad uh, and also by Al-Harrar this is what the Islam uh, says but in someone who goes to uh, the Mushriks and gives them news of the Muslims and uh, wages war this is an exception in Islam, uh, exactly uh, what now America wants from Snowden and what uh, Vladimir Putin uh, did, uh, you know, poisoned uh, his compatriots that uh, betrayed him, he sent after them in Britain uh, who poisoned them and this is uh, published in the BBC. So great region makers, deceivers are killed in all constitutions of the world and this is exactly what is in Islam. But if anyone apostates goes to the Islam will not chase him and kill him because just because he apostates. Yes, Prophet Muhammad says, kill those who apostate. But who are they? Did you read the context? They are those who wage war against Muslims and reveal the secrets of the state. Because we read in Islam, فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرْ Prophet Muhammad applied this ayah here. Whomever wants to believe, let him believe. And whomever wants to disbelieve, let him disbelieve. Prophet Muhammad applied it in Sulh al hudaybi And wages war. We call them ex-Muslims. And these ex-Muslims, most of them on uh, social media, they are just liars. They never know, you know, how many rakats in wudu, you know. How many rakats? If you ask them how many rakats in wudu, they will tell you four rakats, seven rakats in wudu, mashallah. You just ask them, you know, about istinja. How many rakats in istinja and how many rakats in wudu, mashallah, you get very good answers exactly as we got i come back to the point and really focus on it that prophet muhammad sallallahu said in a hadith narrated by sahih muslim bab sulh al hudaybiya uh, volume 2 105 page 105 he said anyone who goes to quraysh from us may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep him far away from us or something he said like this this really shows that there is in Islam this freedom of believing or not believing. You want to disbelieve? Just do not wage war against Muslims. Do not and do not show it in a Muslim state, because if you do, it's disrespectful. Amongst the uh, tips of this uh, treaty is that Prophet Muhammad Sallam will go back until the next year. Will come back as uh, Mu'tamir uh, for Umrah. Because if he, if he goes now to do Umrah, the, the Arabs will say, oh, the, the Mushriks and the Quraysh feared the Prophet. Then uh, here something happened uh, amazing. We call it uh, nowadays the guerrilla war uh, that Abu Jandal and Abu Basir, they broke some of this treaty because uh, after they flee to the Muslims in Medina, Prophet Muhammad takes them back. 
uh, on their way to Mecca, they killed one of them. So he go back, this or the one who is still living, he go back to the Prophet, he says, Ah, he killed my friend. So now, he, so Abu Basir now knew that uh, Prophet Muhammad will, uh, you know, get him back to Quraysh. So he, he runs to a place where they, I mean, between Mecca and Medina. So now he does guerrilla war. And then uh, Muhammad ibn Abdul Karim al-Khattabi, uh, uh, the Rifi, uh, Muhammad ibn Abdul Karim al-Khattabi. And afterwards, Chikivara and the Mao Zedong, the founder of China uh, economy and so on, took it from him and by their confession from uh, Muhammad ibn Abdul Karim al-Khattabi, who took it from Prophet Muhammad from Abu Basir and Abu Jandal. This shows how our ancestors read the, the, the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he stays in a place between Mecca and Medina. Whatever caravan of trade comes from Mecca wants to go to Sham, he will take everything and kill everyone. So and then they resort to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Please take, for, take, take him back. <laughs> so he broke. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam really said, Abu Basir, mashallah, he wages war if, if he has, if only has supporters. And really, uh, he had supporters, 50 from Mecca uh, escaped and come to Abu Jandal and Abu Basir. And then they waged war against Mecca until Mecca was obliged to break some of their treaty. So they let them go to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And they succeeded in this. So by this, uh, Abu Basir clearly shows that Muslims fought for freedom of uh, religion, that uh, everyone has uh, his own uh, freedom to believe. And why you are stopping people from believing? Like, for example, in Myanmar, in uh, other parts of the world, in Kashmir, in India, you stop Muslims from believing. I mean, just believing and you uh, force them to uh, eat pork, drink wine and uh, become atheists. What kind of mentality is this? But Abu Basir really teaches us and listen that Muslim has the uh, or any mankind has the right to choose uh, right from wrong why you are stopping people from believing Abu Bakr said this before when he saw they are torturing he says رَجُلًا أَنْ يَقُولَ رَبِّيَ اللَّهِ you kill someone who just because he believes in one God Allah I reached uh, page 286 up to now Muslims uh, more than half of the Sira, Muslims never fight anyone or initiate war. They all came to the Medina to fight Muslims. But now, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will go to the uh, other countries to uh, ask them to become Muslim. And so if they don't become Muslim, they would just pay the jizya because now they are the uh, dominant power. And this treaty of Al-Hudaybiyah clearly shows that Quraysh now by now are failed and they taste the failure and their arrogance is humiliated. And they know the Arabs no longer look up to the to Quraysh and now the new force is Muslims. Then there was a kind of discussion be pro between Prophet Muhammad and Umar. Why aren't, aren't we going to do Umrah this year and uh, we are Muslims and strong and etc. Prophet Muhammad says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants something else. And that the next year there will be Fath Mecca. So Umar uh, made many good deeds because of this discussion with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa consider it as disrespectful. Uh, and he was uh, released and happy. And that's the end of this uh, treaty between uh, Quraysh and Muslims in Medina. It was a pivotal, crucial treaty between them, which uh, opened the door for Muslims to do much da'wah and be free in spreading Islam. And now they have no uh, restrictions, if you like. And also it shows how Quraysh by now submitted to Muslims and they are inferior in power. And Muslims now are an, a growing force in the Arabic, in all the Arabic peninsula. After that, Al-Mubarak Furi in his book, Al-Rahiq Al-Makhtoum, will speak on the second stage of the Sira. By now, the first stage is finished. Second stage, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will send to the kings, uh, to all the kings around him. After that, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will do Fath Mecca. And uh, after Fath Mecca, only victory of Islam, Alhamdulillah. Jazakum Allah khair. Wassalamu alaikum. ورحمة الله وبركاته